Hey, Mr. Grumpy Gills. When life gets you down, you know what you gotta do? I don't want to know what you gotta do. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim, swim. Dory, no singing. Oh, 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 Dory. I love to swim. And Dory. When you want to swim, you want See, to I'm gonna get stuck now with that song. Now it's like Welcome to Successful Dropout. This podcast is for the outliers, the innovators, the rebels, those that dare to dream and act on their dreams. I'm your host, Kylan Ginger. Join me as we find out what it takes to drop out, grind, and succeed. How's it going, everybody? I've got some pretty exciting news. If you listen to the podcast much, you know we've been building a pretty vibrant community of truly, truly extraordinary people who have committed to an unconventional route through life. The Successful Dropout audience has been growing a lot, and I get a lot of people reaching out to me now with all sorts of questions regarding education, dropping out, opting out, entrepreneurship, resources, networking, etc., So much so that I decided it was time to create a more accessible community on Facebook so that we can all ask and answer these kinds of questions together, as well as celebrate our successes and encourage each other during um, inevitable adversity. So I've created a closed Facebook group, and I want to invite you to join it. If you follow Successful Dropout, if you resonate with our philosophy and want to help me grow this thriving community, go to SuccessfulDropout.com forward slash group. This community is for the rebels, the outliers, the innovators, the doers, and those who dare to dream and act on their dreams. If you're a dropout, an opt-out, if you're thinking about doing one of those things, if you're a parent, even if you aren't any of those things and you graduated school, I want to invite you to join. All that matters is that you resonate with the successful dropout philosophy and that you enter the group with the intention to provide value to the other members and not just receive value yourself. Again, go to SuccessfulDropout.com forward slash group to request admission. Once you're a part of the group, introduce yourself and get involved, and I'll see you there. What is up, Successful Dropouts? Get stoked because today on the show we have Keshav Narula. Keshav is a 20-year-old dropout from San Jose State University, and he is the CEO and founder of an educational nonprofit startup called Homeroom, which is a platform that works on transforming the communication aspect within the educational system. As an immigrant who came on the basis of education, Keshav, uh, Keshav excuse me, grew frustrated with the educational system during college and wrote many articles on education that reached hundreds of thousands or hundreds and thousands of students who felt the same way but didn't have the courage to speak up. So Keshav, that's the intro I have for you, man. But why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do? Sounds good. Thank you, Kylan. Um, So I actually immigrated here when I was 11 years old. Uh, I can speak a single word of English and just going through the entire process of self-learning was uh, enlightening. And uh, so in India, I grew, as a kid, I grew up, I had this uncanny passion uh, for sketching and art. And so I partook in these drawing competitions and I always won first place. Uh, so for me, art was a medium for my creativity. And though today I don't sketch or draw, uh, the creativity that I have uh, has transitioned to me in designing UI and websites. And for the past three years, Uh, When I was in college, I was just getting frustrated and frustrated with the system. And I decided I have to kind of pull the trigger and do something about it uh, and take control. And here I am, dropped out of college and pursuing my dream. Yeah, man. So you, okay, so you moved here from India when you were, you said 11, right? Yeah. And you couldn't speak, you couldn't speak any English at all? Nothing, not at all. Did you take any classes or just sort of like put yourself in the environment in, the, in these environments and just learn on the go or how did that how did that work out? That's exactly what I did. I mean, I can speak I can talk to my teachers at all, so and I didn't Gosh. have any family here. So it was like learn on the fly. And so I used to go to the library. I used to just like pick up any random books and go back to my house and then read in front of a mirror and just practice my accent, just practice. And keep what? speaking. And I, did, and I did that for two years, uh, and then I didn't talk to anyone. I was just taking all the information in, and 
And then I started talking and I realized that I didn't have that much of an accent that other my uh, family members did. Huh. That's that's really interesting. So you moved here without your family, though? Uh, so I moved here with my uh, my dad, my mom, and my sister, but I didn't okay. have like an extended family here. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, did, did they have to go through the same process of learning the language and everything like that? Yeah. My parents have a broken English. My sister has a, a pretty good English, and I think I'm probably the only one without the accent. Yeah, dude. I, can, I mean, I can barely tell, but I mean, what did you watch like TV shows or how did... How, I don't know. I just feel like it'd be very difficult for me, like for instance, to move to India and do the exact same thing. But I've never <laughs> done it. Of course, I've never been in that scenario, so maybe I just mm-hmm. don't know. But that seems pretty amazing to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I didn't have a TV or a computer like to look up videos and watch TV. Uh, so it was just <laughs> observing people and seeing how they talk and the the way they say like specific words and just kind of pick those small cues. Good Lord, man. Well, if that isn't a testament to the, the power of just-in-time learning, I don't, I don't know what it is. We, we talk about this, that concept all the time on the show, just-in-time learning, as for people that do drop out to be able to be kind of more efficient and stuff, <clears throat> learning things always in the context of taking action or pursuing your goals instead of just-in-case learning, which is a lot of what you get in informal schooling and stuff. So um, that's... That's awesome, man. So uh, let's talk. I'd, I'd love to hear about your story of dropping out. Like, why Why did you decide to drop out? I feel like in the culture that you came from, that's, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I feel like that's really looked down on. Uh, I don't know. Is it? Yeah. Um, that, I think just having this conversation with my dad was like the hardest thing ever. Uh, so <laughs> as an immigrant, I have this expectation that I have to kind of graduate from college and get a degree and have a stable career. Uh, yeah. But choosing to drop out of, out of college, that doesn't come with stability. It comes with uncertainty. Uh, and then my it was just a hard experience to go with. And uh, I was grateful to be in this situation, to be in the United States and having this opportunity. Uh, but ever since I entered college, I saw these red flags throughout the educational system. Uh, I think the biggest one that I noticed was when I first came and I noticed that no one cared about my learning. Uh, for the first two years, I couldn't even get into my computer science major. The professors didn't seem to care about me. Uh, they were just reading off the PowerPoints. And <laughs> I just asked myself, what am I doing here? Like, if I that's all I have to do, I can do that on my own time. And so after two years, I realized that I needed to, uh, I needed a change. And then I realized that college was limiting my potential. I was forced to take like history and English classes that I didn't really care for. But I couldn't take the classes that I was interested in. Uh, and so during the finals of last December, I really walked out of my classes, finishing my finals in like five to 10 minutes. And then I sat on a bench and I pulled out my Mac, uh, opened up Evernote, and then I wrote a letter to myself. Uh, and then in that letter, I asked myself this one question, that, uh, which assured me that I needed to drop out of college. And the question was, if I woke up tomorrow on my deathbed, would I regret not dropping out? Hmm. And... That question really added the fuel to my fire. I realized that I would regret not dropping out than dropping out. Uh, and after that, I realized that it was the time to kind of pull the trigger and tell my parents. Uh, and during that time, I started blogging about education and I wrote a bunch of articles that blew up on LinkedIn and Medium. And then I had hundreds of students reaching out to me and telling me that they felt the same when they were so happy that someone had the courage to speak up and say something about it. <laughs> I, I I think that's I think that's incredible. Um, do you have like uh, you can send me it later? But some of the links to those articles are they still around? Yeah, they are. I'll definitely send you the links. Yeah, that'd be great. We'll we'll put those in the show notes. Um, I am curious though. It's kind of a fascination of mine. Why why are you the way that you are? I guess like what it's not. It's not a common thing yet that you find in very many people. Of course, people that listen to the show a lot probably experience it more than others because we have we've interviewed a lot of successful dropouts now but it's not a very common thing to sort of naturally start to question the status quo as much as you did and question college and to sort of pursue um i don't know thinking and acting unconventionally even though there's some risk even though it's scary and so i mean what it is what was it about your your past maybe does it does like entrepreneurship or anything similar to that run in your family or anything that you can pin that to or 
<laughs> funny thing uh, entrepreneurship does not run in my family my family actually comes from like following rules and working in offices and uh, cubicles um so for me to really do something like that was something that surprised me too but i think for me i'm more of a philosopher i kind of observe the the environment and then when i stepped back from the actual situation and education i realized something was wrong and then i decided to kind of look in and observe and i noticed that students were working their asses off to study for this one test in the library mm-hmm. where they could be spending this time to work on something to bring value to others and then that question uh, from that question everything built up and i'm like this makes no sense everyone's kind of they're blind they can't see the truth they're being forced they're like a revenue stream for the education the uh, the system doesn't care they just want you to go and give the money so you can go out and not get a job and i think uh one instance that i that i can think of was i was talking to one of my friend who graduated with a cs degree and this guy couldn't get a single job uh mm-hmm. because I don't I don't know why he had the degree he had the credentials but he failed all the interviews so that just showed me that the degree doesn't matter the degree is just a piece of paper that doesn't really show anything and in today's culture it doesn't mean anything you can have an MBA but if you're not you don't have the skill set to do something uh you're not valuable you're just a liability to a company so <laughs> just going through those smaller experiences kind of open up my eyes and I needed I realized that I needed to take a change in an action yeah I I I love what you said there and it's it's that ability to be able to step out of your current situation and look at the bigger picture is so important and that's exactly what you did there and that's what I feel like a lot of people are missing out on uh we're sort of just happy to be in the pipeline or the system we're in and it's it's it doesn't come naturally i feel like to a lot of people to be able to step yeah outside and take a birds eye view and and just look at all the different pieces and how they fit together look at this this game called formal schooling and earning a, a college a degree and ask yourself these tough questions like is is there really a return on investment here uh, is there is this really mm-hmm. going to be worth the time money and effort i'm i'm putting into this so um but i am curious what Many of our listeners, you know, one of the hardest things is talking to your friends and your family about this decision to drop out. And so how did that go, I guess? And what sort of tips and advice would you give for people, say, talking to their parents about this kind of decision? Right. And um, my situation is a little different because I, my parents and I immigrated here. So my parents sacrificed their jobs, their families, their dreams. <clears throat> right. So I could live a better life. Right. Uh, so for me... it was a hard decision because to them education is everything you need to go to college to be stable in your career and do all of that uh so for me i had to really plan it psychologically and approach the situation like that so around november uh december i think 2 months before winter break i used to mention to my parents here and there that college wasn't helping me that i the college didn't care about me but it wasn't until winter break that i was working on this uh, application i wanted Um I woke up like 6 a.m. every morning, worked on my apps, uh, slept late at night, and my parents just saw this passion in me to build something valuable. And they saw this spirit, something that was you could say limited uh by being in college. Hmm. So, uh for me, I understood it from my parents' perspective. It was more like if I was a, a parent and my kid approached me and said that I want to drop out, what kind of questions would I ask them? And so like, having this perception I asked myself okay my dad's going to ask me this my dad's going to ha- ask me that people are going to say this uh how am I going to I just prepared all these answers up front and so when I got the opportunity to talk to my dad he really understood he saw that I kind of thought everything through it wasn't like I'm just going to drop out and now what it was more like okay I have a reason to drop out I have something that I'm going to work on give me time trust in me and I uh, just let me do this so for me uh for a lot of people my age i mean uh my my dad my dad and i have this gap of like 30 years so understanding from his perspective was a little hard um but i yeah. think people our age need to understand from their parents perspective if you just equal up on their level uh that just shows that you're mature and that you're making the right decision and they really believe in you uh so for me it was understanding it psycholo- uh, psychologically and just observing and having the right time to kind of say it yeah Yeah, right on. And so 
we always encourage people on the show, you know, not to just don't just drop out because it's hard or because you just decide you don't like it anymore. You're not enjoying it. Uh, Essentially, don't uh, don't fail out is is the phrase I like to use. But, you know, it sounds like you really dropped out because you wanted a bigger challenge, uh, a better, more noble challenge than college. And that's the sort of reason that I think one should should make that tough decision. And, of course, your parents are a lot more likely to get on board with that. Um, also, if you have a plan that you're presenting them. And so you said you talked to them about this this next thing, this thing you wanted to do instead of college. And so was that was that homeroom then? Um, it wasn't homeroom. It was it wasn't a, like a concrete plan that I presented uh, because plans don't really work after you drop out because things happen here and there. But just <laughs> having true. an overall idea of what you really want to do, what you want to spend your time doing uh, and showing that you're capable of doing that, that you're really dedicated. And just, if you can show that passion and your drive to your parents, uh, they will really trust you because they're like, they're the only ones that really, really believe in you and they want you to succeed. Uh, so if you can show it to them, uh, you know, they will really help you out with this decision. Yeah, yeah. And so what was that next thing that you worked on? Because that's such a crucial time right after you drop out uh, those next few months. I mean, you have some tough decisions to make there. You got to make stuff happen. And so what was it that you <clears throat> you did exactly? Uh, so it was an idea that I had about education. I knew something was wrong. Uh, but I wasn't sure what was it. So I told my parents, hey, I have this idea about education. I'm going to be interviewing professors here and there. Uh, but this is something that I would really want to pursue. Like, I can really make a change and bring value to others that way. So my parents are like, okay, well, we believe in you. You understand what you want to do. Uh, and that's how Homeroom kind of came about. Uh, and the entire story is that I grew up as an introvert. So I always had a hard time talking to people. And then I remember my first day of college, um, sitting my first biology class for 400 students, uh, <laughs> just being intimidated by the professor because she had a PhD from like MIT. And I'm like, wow, she's so smart. And then <laughs> on top of that, I have to make this biggest decision of my life by choosing a major where I could barely cook spaghetti. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, this is complicated. What am I going to do? But during that first class, I noticed something that kind of uh, spoke to me and it was... The class, first of all, was boring. The professor was reading off the slides. Students were actually on their phones, Snapchatting. No one cared enough to participate in the class. And uh, that was like the problem in the class. And I had this thing happen to me throughout my three years. No one participated. Students are on their Snapchat. Professor's like, oh, the students don't want to be in the class. I hate my students. (laughs) Students just didn't connect with the professors, and professors really didn't connect with their students. And we spend so much time with our professors, but we don't know much about them. And instead of just being lecturers, they need to be our role models. They need to inspire us and be our mentors to guide us. Uh, So I realized this is a miscommunication. I decided to interview professors throughout the Bay Area to really understand the uh, the problems they were having. Uh, And I kind of led them to this rabbit hole. And then they had this aha moment. They're like, holy crap, wait, I'm having this problem. I can't connect with my students. And because of that, this and that is happening. And that that was kind of like a, a point of proof for us. It gave us it gave us that kind of assurance that what we are working on is really going to solve this problem. And so that's how Homeroom came about. It's an educational platform to, that focuses on building relationship between students and professors which kind of leads to boosting engagement and GPA and just creating an optimal uh, classroom flow. Gotcha. And so has it, um, I don't remember if you mentioned, has it officially launched yet or is it still sort of in the dev phase? So we're currently in the beta phase. We're actually going to launch this upcoming January. Uh, So we're just kind of finishing up the stuff, putting the pieces together and really excited uh, to kind of launch this. Right on. And so what what will it look like exactly? Like if I, is it an app? Yeah, it's a web platform for now. Um, okay. And it's an app. You can, it's not a it's not a learning management system. Uh, it's more of like a a fun social platform for students to really connect. So think of it like a social media, but for education for your class. Gotcha. So like, what's the what would be the process? Like if I got on this platform and got an account like what are the types of things that i could do 
right? <clears throat> the first thing that you can do, and this was really fun for me to figure out, was uh, having the professor do an informal introduction about themselves. So instead of walking to your class, not knowing anything about your professor, uh, you you go on this platform, you see this video, and your professor's like, hey, my name is Sally, I have a PhD in this, I like to skydive, I like to play video games, and I like Star Wars. <laughs> and right there, instantly, students can really connect with the professor, whether it's Star Wars, whether it's playing a video game, they understand that there's this common connection, which opens up this kind of like a uh, opens up this way for them to communicate with the professor easily. Yeah. And so when students are in the class, now they're comfortable with the professors. Now they can ask questions on this platform. They can help their students out. And we're adding gamification to that to make it fun for the user to ask and be open about what they're confused about. If students are not asking questions in the classroom, that doesn't mean that everyone gets it. It's probably that no one gets it and no one has the courage to speak up. <laughs> but our goal is to really create an environment where students are comfortable speaking with the professor in class, not just on the platform. So it's a result that we want from this platform. Yeah, I, I really like that because now that I think about it, and of course, uh, if people have been listening to the show at any length of the time, you know <clears> I've, <throat> I've spent all but like two months in college, but <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, before I dropped out, but I do remember like you'd walk in, you know, nothing about the, the teacher, the professor. And it's this very, at least like for the first couple months. And again, that's all I spent, you know, of a class, it's very, this sort of sterile environment and it's like awkward and you are afraid to speak up. I, yeah, so I really do like that idea fostering that relationship. Cause the more you, you know about somebody, the more you have in common, the more, uh, you can, you know, open up to them. And ultimately I think learn, um, that's interesting. So are you working with a team on on this? Yeah, so I'm working with a team. I have, so my mentor is actually doing the business aspect of it. I'm doing UI and doing the development as well. And then I'm kind of helping you out with the business. So, And then I have a developer friend who's helping me with just kind of pushing out this application, making sure that it's production level. Right on. Right on. Do you guys, is there anybody else out there doing <clears throat> something similar to this? Actually, uh, not any platform that I can think of from our market of research, we realize that a lot of these platforms that you see, they're giving students the answer. They're not helping the system. They're creating an additional problem. It's mm -hmm. like you can just go to this app and you can put in a question that gives you an answer back. And that's not helping you learn. That's just giving you answers. So we're just taking a different twist to it. We're working, we're working on the psychological aspect of it while helping build relationships. And I think a lot of applications in education are not helping people build relationship with each other. And plus the entire educational sector is very unsexy. Like no one wants to get into education like they want to get into like social media. So I really want to make education fun for students and be able to connect with the professors. Cause like you said, those professors could really help you in the long run. Some of the professors that I actually connected with, they've helped me with networking. They helped me with all these questions that I've had. And if we can really have all these professors do that for their students, that can really open up so many doors for students and we wouldn't have to be stuck in a classroom and listening to them um, kind of ramp about some concept that you can really Google. Yeah. So just the entire aspect of that really uh, opened up the eyes of professors and they're super excited to see this uh, implement in their classrooms. Yeah, I, I, I love the idea, man, and it seems like it's probably going to do really well. Um, I'd be curious, you know, I told you before we started the show, we have a lot of our listeners who are either entrepreneurs that are interested in entrepreneurship or they want to start their own business someday. Uh, one of the big hangups there can be coming up with a business idea in general or even finding out like what, like what sort of direction do you want to pursue? What industry, like what do you want to actually, what kind of business do you want to start? And then what's the idea <laughs> within say that, that sphere or that industry? And so I'd be curious to hear your story of how you came up with the idea and any suggestions or advice you, you, could, you would give to somebody like that. Right. Uh, I think the biggest misconception, misconception people have is that they look for ideas to solve. Uh, you sh I, don't, I, I, total, I don't believe that people should look for ideas to solve. I think people should solve a problem of their own. And so that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm solving a problem that I actually witnessed in classrooms and I realized that was a problem. Instead of me, uh, for example, if I worked at Google, I wouldn't just 
go into education and say, okay, let me fix this specific problem because I don't know the ins and the outs of the things, uh, the way that it works. Yeah. But as a student, when I'm actually in the classrooms, I see the problems real hand and I can go about solving those problems. So instead of looking for ideas to solve, really solve a problem of your own and then kind of ask your friends and validate the idea if it works. And if there's another person that really likes the idea that that's uh, using the platform and is helping them out, you can kind of scale that up and really turn into something bigger than just a project. Right on. No, I, I, I like that a lot. Um, I mean, in a lot of ways, I can say that's exactly what I've done with Successful Dropout and why uh, I've also been able to continue to be passionate about this podcast uh, and other things like it because this is something I wish that I would have had when I dropped out. I wish I could have heard from other people like myself and had the, the how-to, uh, you know, right in front of me. So I guess for people listening, you could say step one is find a quiet place, a couple hours, grab a piece of paper and pen and start writing down all of the problems that you currently have, I guess. And which one of those oh, yeah. sort of sticks out to you as something that maybe you can build a solution and a business around. And then, uh, like, uh, Kashov said, and I pronounced that correctly, right? Almost Keshav. Keshav. But you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, if only I, one of the, one of the ideas I've had, I don't know if this is possible. We're getting off on a little rabbit trail here, but, uh, you would probably know better than me if this is possible. I think it would be so cool if you had like a Google glasses like device that you could wear on your face and it would like link to maybe other people's phones or some other device they'd have on them if they opted into it to like their Facebook profile. And you could like put on these glasses and see like a little blurb in top of their head or something with their name and maybe a little bit about about them. Because, mm-hmm. man, something like that would be so Yo, <laughs> helpful. Actually, I had this idea like last year and I actually pursued it. But there was one problem that I had. And that was a lot of people, like a lot of people that I ran into, they have like memes as their profile picture. And so that would kind of <laughs> kind of be weird. Uh, a lot of the people like because I have Indian friends and they put up these like actors and actresses photos. So it'd be weird to kind of see that. I don't know. <laughs> just something that I realized yeah, I mean, it's just, I have such an <clears throat> issue sometimes with people's names. I shouldn't say an issue. It's a, it's an opportunity uh, that I, I need to work through to get better at remembering people's names and pronouncing them, even if they're a little bit different like mine. <laughs> and I always thought something like that would be helpful. But anyways, we'll get back to the point here. What I was saying is, you know, step one is, <clears throat> you know, sit down, write down maybe all the problems that you've faced in the last couple of weeks. Which one of those stands out to you as something that you can build a, a business around and and can really provide a solution for and then start asking start talking to your friends and if enough people are experiencing the same problem and then also you might want to look around to see if somebody else is trying to solve that problem and are can you do do a better job than them and even differentiate um that might be something worth pursuing as a as a business idea so Step and can I pitch in uh, one more thing? Yeah, no, go for it. Um, I think a lot of people our age, we're kind of, we're super invested into other people's lives. So we have Instagram, we have Snapchat and all of that. And we know mm. so much more about other people than we know about ourselves. <laughs> That's true. Um, and so I think what a lot of people need to do is kind of take a break from social media and really spend that time by yourself. Like you said, sit down, really understand what you really want to do. And then just think about all these problems. And when I did that, some of these ideas came into my head. So I would totally suggest if someone's looking to solve their problems, stop your social media accounts, put them, put them on a pause and really sit down by yourself, figure out your strengths, your weaknesses, what you can really do. And what are the problems that you enjoy and that you want to solve? And when you do that, great things happen. Yeah, no, I think you're dead on, man, because this is something that actually there's a there's a gal in our Facebook group who recently just joined the Successful Dropouts Facebook group and she asked this question. She's asking, she wants to start a business and she's asking questions like, what, like, what do I do? I have some interests here and there, but I really have no idea what I want to do. I just want to start a successful business. And the majority of the answers that she was being given, and I was just looking and commenting myself, was to, to that extent to take some time and do some introspection. And this is exactly what you did. Uh, when you wrote that letter to yourself, I was really happy to hear that because that um, I think that's one of the best methods uh, for doing exactly what we've what we've been talking about. Um, shutting all the social media off, stop focusing on 
on other people and the, the media, all the stuff we're bombarded with on a daily basis and really get inside your own head and figure out what what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, what are you innately curious about, what uh, what did you want to be when you were a kid and before anybody else told you you had to be or do a certain thing um, and really figure that stuff out. Um, and this is like, it's it's not like a step one, two, three sort of process. At least for me, it's never been. It's like this really messy process where all I know is that I need to, I need to grab a pen and a piece of paper or like just an empty Word document, go someplace quiet, shut everything down. I do a lot of backpacking, so sometimes I'll be away for a few days at a time, which is even better. That's more ideal. And you just like, you just start typing or writing. And you start you 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 start asking yourself questions like you were saying you st- you wrote a letter to yourself. Um, I'll start just analyzing my thoughts. I'll, I ask questions of myself and then answer them. And it's this really messy. Sometimes I can get it into some sort of bullet bullet pointed like organized format, but very rarely. But just the process of and I know I'm talking a lot here, but just the process of working through. Um, all these sort of messy thoughts and and emotions and things that you didn't even know you had inside of you at the end of it all, you're sort of brain dumping. And at the end of it all, usually a couple things become really clear. And those are the things that maybe you should focus a little bit more on or, Mm -hmm. or pursue. It's incredible, man. Actually just looking back, I've, I take, I've taken pictures of those notes. And for instance, there's one where I was just journaling just brain dumping about what I wanted to do, like what my ideal lifestyle was was, and what kind of business I wanted to build. And this was like three, four years ago on a backpack trip. And I found it recently. And my life has roughly turned out the way, like the, the way that uh, I concluded I wanted it to way back then. Um, and I didn't like, I didn't, plan anything specifically like I didn't create this bullet list and and action steps to get exactly there but it was just the act of I I wrote it down I got it out of my my head and saw it on paper and it was sort of reflected back on me and subconsciously that does some amazing things and and right uh now here we are and I look back on that stuff and it's like (laughs) yeah that that it worked like it it played an important role in getting me to where I am now so oh yeah um, that was a bit of a tangent, but I've heard you mention that a couple times now, and I think that's that's really important. Um, but anyways, man, uh, I'd be curious if you – could you tell us a story, if you've got one and maybe you have a few already, uh, one of sort of the key keys to success is, is unfortunately and fortunately failing a lot and, and learning from those failures. Um, can you think of what you would consider to be your worst – entrepreneurial moment say say we're building this thing to date and what that story is and what you learned man okay i have one and i think that was like the worst moment i had working on this uh startup and i think it starts with having the wrong people on your team so i had this guy who came in and he was super money driven so he told me as soon as he joined he wanted a competitive salary Mm-hmm. And we used to get each other because I told him if startups like uh, were created on the basis of a competitive salary, our startups ecosystem would have collapsed even before it began. Yeah. And so his presence really affected us negatively. Uh, the way that he said things, the things that he did kind of slowed us down. We couldn't get our work done. We always had arguments and stuff like that. And just that entire situation of getting the wrong person on your team helped me realize that Starts fail not because the idea isn't that good. It's because wrong people are on the team. Mm. And then as soon as I realized that, I had to part ways with this guy because I knew that if he's not as passionate as I am uh, about this idea, if he doesn't really believe in uh, what I believe in, it's not going to work out. And, and, and because of that, uh, it can bring a startup to his ashes. <laughs> so just I think that was like the worst moment dealing with the person and going through that stuff. Uh, was hindering me from really truly achieving uh, the true potential of this company. So that was the worst moment I had. And I had a, I was lucky enough to have a mentor that kind of guided me throughout the process. Um, but yep. if anyone's listening, if they're looking to hire someone, just make sure that they're the person that you're hiring truly believes in what you're doing and is just as passionate as you are. 
Yeah, love it. And it's, that's always a tough thing to to deal with when you've got personnel on the team that are sort of bringing the entire team down. I know we've dealt with that a, a couple times. And sometimes it's only like the, you're only butting heads between like yourself as the owner of a business and that person, and they're not affecting the rest of the team or the rest of your employees. And in those situations, I've always been more of the opinion that you know, if they're at least providing value and not affecting like your customers and your other team uh, members, then like it's probably okay. Like I can I can deal with it myself. But the moment they start their attitude, say, starts affecting the rest of the team, um, and then especially your customers, that's when mm-hmm. something's got to change. And that's never a fun fun thing. Um, awesome, man. What is a what's something you do every day? All that without without missing a day, without failure, that that contributes to your success, I guess. For me, um, I don't I don't really believe in perf- uh, being perfect at what I do. I really believe in doing things f- at fast pace and really getting feedback. Uh, so my every day when I wake up, what, whatever that I'm working on, whether it's a feature, whether it's a product or an idea, I make sure that I'm validating that with other people. I would message my friends I'll ask hey what do you think mm-hmm. about this and I just don't base everything off my instinct mm-hmm. I also get feedback to understand what people really think because if I'm the only one that really sees the value in this it's not going to work out because I'm not selling this to myself um, so for me the way that I work I really believe in speed and building things and failing and kind of learning from them instead of waiting to make this thing super perfect that no one really cares about it anymore and you spend so much time on it Yeah. so my message to everyone is just make sure that you're passionate and really focus on speed and really build this and get as much feedback as you can because that's the only thing that will help you uh, succeed actually in real life or in your business. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's dead on. I once disappeared into a room for three months building something and I didn't ask anybody if they wanted it and I emerged with this uh, shiny brand new thing and surprise no nobody wanted it uh, okay. they wanted they wanted parts of what of what i had built but not the way that it was basically presented and packaged and that mm-hmm. was a that was an interesting lesson to learn um i don't definitely don't view it as 3 months wasted i i learned a lot in the process but boy if i would have just been talking to like my customer my demographic my my target market right. the whole way through and, and only building things as they basically wanted them Oh, that would have just been so valuable. So people mm-hmm. listening, learn that lesson. Um, I assume that you have a, a, a laptop and a TV now. Do you watch Netflix? And if so, I how much? I do not. I do not watch Netflix. I'm not paying for anything. So I basically just stream, just watch things online. And my friends <laughs> give me some of the links. So I just use them. I try to <laughs> avoid TV. So I actually haven't watched TV in three years. What? And I barely watch movies and TV shows. The last show that I watched, okay, well, I, I was I was on a break for two days and I watched Silicon Valley. I finished all the four seasons. Uh, and that was the last in show. In two days? Only, <laughs> yeah, in two days. And that's the only show that I actually watched. So, yeah. Uh, wow. So, I mean, do you, do you read? Like, what do you do in your off time, I guess, when you're not building? <clears throat> uh, I enjoy playing basketball and I enjoy reading a lot. So I read a bunch of books, uh, whether it's entrepreneurship, whether it's uh, psychology or philosophy. Just really like to read and understand ideas and see how I can implement that into my life personally and my business. Okay. So what's a book that you've read recently that you might reckon, recommend to us then? I'm currently reading that right now. It's called Lynchpin by Seth Godin. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, it's one of my favorite books. Uh, I think it's it's really good for the – for. Uh, the people that are listening because it talks about the current state of our society and our education. What do you really need to do to separate yourself from the noise? So if you're looking to drop out, it really talks about this entire aspect of it. So I, I would totally recommend that to everyone who's kind of listening in. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. So do you don't, you don't play any video games or anything like that either. I live a very plain life. So I write <laughs> a lot of metaphysics. So I write uh, a lot of philosoph- philosophical journals just on the side. Oh, really? Like four yeah. published journals? Ooh, not yet. Uh, or just I'm for actually, your own, basically? Yes, yeah, so I just write some metaphysics stuff. So like, what is life? Why is time moving? Stuff like that. <laughs> and I'm actually planning on aggregating and creating a booklet 
so I can just give it to my friends. Uh, seriously, I, I love all of that stuff. I absolutely love philosophy, asking those tough questions. To, uh, <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Uh, oh yeah like if feel free to send me anything man i'll I'll, uh i would definitely read it and give any feedback if that's what if that's what you want (laughs) that's sweet i like that um oh i do do you have any sort of uh internet resource gadget tool anything that you use a lot uh, that that you recommend to us too actually i built this new uh resource so i I had this problem where my friends were messaging me and they were like, I want to learn about UX or UI or JavaScript or startups. Yeah. And I used to give them links from my bookmarks, but I realized there needs to be a platform uh, that gives you all that information. So I created this small platform uh, with my favorite handpick of resources about startups, cryptocurrency, design. So if anyone's looking to kind of expand their knowledge and their arsenal and become better generalists, uh, I would totally say check it out. It's called Synthesis. Uh, synthesis? Funny thing, synthesis, S-Y-M-P-O-H-S-I-S. I'll give you the link. Yes, okay. And when I Googled that later on, I realized uh, it means to grow together or the process of growing together. Um, so it kind of fit in with I what I was working on. And I think it's something that a lot of people can definitely look into and find it useful. <laughs> I I love it. You just keep building things. You just, they're just a problem you're experiencing, so you just build a solution to it. That's a That's, yeah. true entrepreneur right there, man. Um, you're so are, you're into crypto then too? A little bit, yes. I'm trying to I'm trying to invest, but I'm waiting for the bubble to pop so I can uh, get into it. Oh, so you're you're one of those those people that, that uh, yeah. you think there that there's a bubble. I really don't know much much about it. I have been invested for a few months now, but I mean, what are your thoughts on that though? I'd just be curious. <laughs> I'm very. I think the technology that they're using, the underlying technology, blockchain, is really revolutionary in so many ways Mm -hmm. Uh, but cryptocurrency um bitcoin i think bitcoin is just going to stay as it is or it's it's going to be the number one cryptocurrency but you have to look at what what they're actually doing so i know cryptocurrency they had this problem with their blockchain technology so they're kind of working on making it even better and faster right and with ethereum they're working on smart contracts and uh they're really changing the way that we operate and Mm -hmm. the way that our uh technology is going to work in the next 10 years so i think investing in those uh those cryptocurrency will definitely uh, go a long way and one of my friends he invested in ethereum when it was like 10 cents and he just made 800k no joke (laughs) so i'm like oh i missed out (laughs) yeah i know there's there's definitely a few people i know like that and um, I've made some decent money too in the past, and and also lost uh, some decent money. There's a very popular episode about uh, a few episodes back now where I had, I had a lot of money sitting uh, uh, on an exchange actually for too long, and I made some dumb mistakes, and it ended up getting hacked and stolen. And um, luckily, mostly recovered from that by now. But uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, um, I I always try. You know, there's there's always these coins and stuff that are skyrocketing in the moment and you have this fear of missing out the the FOMO Mm -hmm. you know you want to jump on board and um I learned pretty early on that's not the best way to invest you got to really look at um the team behind the token you know are they is it a good team and what are they actually doing what's the technology actually doing and is it good and that's uh, the best way to it's more of uh it's like it's more about value investing instead of just like day trading um and and uh yeah. yeah i mean there are a bunch of like uh uh the meme like dodge meme they have coins for that they have coins for everything so <laughs> yeah just because the price is like 300 dollars doesn't mean it's it's valuable yeah so like you said you have to really understand what they're doing and really invest into that <laughs> you're so <laughs> do yeah the doge that was literally a coin based on a meme so yeah uh, and there's a lot of sort of pump and dump coins out there too and because it's still very much unregulated in <clears throat> these sort of things that are illegal in the in the uh, more traditional stock market, you can still do with crypto. So you got to really watch out for that stuff. I'm hoping to do a few more episodes and go more into depth on, on that later. But anyways, um, we're getting to the end of our time here, man. But there's two questions I, I want to uh, end with here uh, with you. What parting advice would you give to any of our listeners who are thinking of dropping out, um, perhaps to be an entrepreneur like like you are, but they're they haven't quite made that step yet? Just some parting advice. Uh, I think it's 
I think it really comes down to asking yourself this one question that I did, and it really changed my life. Uh, if you were 80 years old, would you regret not doing what you want to do, whether it's starting a business, whether it's shopping out? And when you realize that life is short, in a blink of an eye, you'll be 80, and then you have so many things that you didn't do. That's so true. <laughs> would you regret doing that, or would you regret living a life that you really wanted to live and the way that you wanted to live. So I think it really comes down to that. And once you understand the answer to that, focus on yourself and really work on your craft and really get better at what you do. Yeah. If people tend to frame uh, things that, that exercise of when you're on your deathbed and thinking back and regret, they tend to frame it as regretting the things that you did do, but oftentimes it's regretting the things that you actually <laughs> didn't do. Right. And I will exactly. tell you guys, like it, it is... It is a scientific fact that the older you get, the the faster your perception of time is. I mean, you know, Christmas comes a lot faster now that I'm 28 years old than it did when I was five years old. Um, the years <laughs> just sort of fly by, and it, you know, I'm still in my 20s, but I can't imagine, you know, how fast things are going to seem like they're going when you hit your 30s and 40s and, and 50s. And so life is so. Um, precious. Like on one hand, you really do have to uh, sort of seize the day. And if there's something you want to do, do it now. Um, on the other hand, if you're, you know, like 18, 25 years old, even 30 still, I'd, I'd argue, um, you've got like statistically the majority of, of say, like successful um, exits from companies and stuff come from people that are more in their 40s and stuff like you you have you still have a lot of time to pursue and do all the things that uh, you want to do so on, on on one hand definitely don't don't uh, treat life like it's just gonna last for, forever do the things you want to do now but you know on, on the other side of the coin you have time if, if you're young you have time to pursue this idea and this business for say five years and then pivot and pursue you know so something else too don't get hung up and get in this analysis paralysis like you have to pick one thing right now for the <laughs> rest of your life right right and um, i mean uh, i think this this at this age i think we're so lucky because we have no obligations no responsibilities we yeah. have no kids no wife so we can really take those yeah. risks and still fail Right, yes. but when you're like 28, 30, when you have a wife and you have responsibilities, you really can't take all those risks for yourself. So this is like a prime time for you to really pursue what you want to do. And even if you fail, there you still have time to do other things. Yeah, dude, right on. I totally, I totally agree. Uh, start that business now, while you can still live in a basement and just eat ramen all day. <laughs> so, oh, <yeah. laughs> um, last question here: What parting advice do you have for any of our listeners who have dropped out? and who are all already on their entrepreneurial journey? Uh, I think the, the, the something that I want to really tell them is to really focus on creating a valuable product. Because so often we get lost with business plans and revenue streams and the number game, uh, all of which are important for business, but they don't really mean anything if the product isn't good. Yeah. So it's about building something valuable that people love and want to share with others. Because it's so much easier to monetize from a great product than a product that no one uses. Uh, and with so much noise on the internet, you really have to grab the user's attention. And that comes with building something valuable for them. So focusing solely on the product and understanding what they want is the way to go. Right on, right on, man. What's the best way that people can connect with you? Uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Awesome. Well, Successful Dropouts, you've been hanging out with Keshav and Kylan, learning what it takes to drop out, grind, and succeed as an entrepreneur. For everything we talked about today, head over to Successful Dropout and type K-E-S-H-A-V into the search bar, and the show notes will pop right up. And as always, stay hungry, stay foolish. For more information about how to drop out, grind, and succeed, go to SuccessfulDropout.com. I also love questions. If you have a question about anything we talked about today, I want to hear from you. Go to SuccessfulDropout.com and click the Ask Me a Question link at the top of the page. Successful Dropouts, if you could go to iTunes and leave a positive rating and review, it would help this show out a lot. I know you're busy. I know you got a lot going on. But if you do that, it helps this podcast rank. It helps other people listen to it and gain value just like you have been. Thank you so much in advance.